In November of 2016, my wife asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I jokingly said I wanted a CNC machine. We couldn't afford a washing machine, much less a CNC machine, but it gave me the idea, I could probably build a CNC machine. So that's where this whole process started. So using the $200 I had saved in my PayPal account from selling things on eBay, I bought a CNC controller kit and started building. The machine was really something, and not in a good way. It showed me everything I didn't know about CNC machines, and building things, frankly. The thing was a beautiful disaster, or maybe just a disaster, but it worked really well, so I could finally set my imagination free in the realm of numerical control. Now, I could have done many videos on how poorly this machine was built, but I finally had a CNC machine in my garage, and that's all that mattered. After countless, and I mean countless hours, of making custom signs for people, pretty much anybody who wanted to make a sign because I enjoyed my CNC machine so much, I found out that I didn't really like doing custom projects for people, and I phased out the business side of my CNC experience. Right about this time, I started getting paid by YouTube for videos that I had posted years ago. So I decided that I would focus my free time on making videos rather than pieces of wood with other people's name on them. But there was no way my pride would let me post that awful machine on YouTube, so the stage was set for a fresh, from scratch CNC build. The new machine would start out the same as the last, a CNC kit from eBay. I went with a 5-axis CNC controller with external drivers. The motors? NEMA 23s opposed to the NEMA 17s I used on my last machine. The structure would be all metal, mostly inch and a half thick angle profile, about a sixteenth thick, and three sixteenths plate. The linear rails would be made of the same angle profile I used everywhere else, with 606ZZ bearings for gliding surfaces. Walking away with hindsight from the last build, I decided to use a belt drive opposed to all thread. Mostly because it's easier to build, it keeps the cost way down for more expensive setups, and there's virtually no resistance with the belt drive. Although it has obvious limitations, it worked very well. The computer I used was a dumpster find from the factory I worked at, and the router I used belonged to my dad before he decided he didn't need it. The best place to start this build is at the beginning. The foundation would be a plate of 3 16 steel. Using boxes of 832 countersunk screws, I attached the rails to the bed. A time-consuming process, but it was the best option because welding would cause the metal to warp so badly that it's next to impossible to keep the pieces flat during the process. And a warped CNC bed is useless. Next, I attached some bearings to angle iron to use on the linear rails. Although it seems like an unusual setup, it worked very well and only cost a couple dollars per side. Next, I bolted more angle iron, you're probably starting to see the theme here, to the bearing plates and used one inch by one inch steel tubing to attach the uprights to each other. Again, I didn't weld anything in the assembly of the gantry, partially to keep it from warping, but more importantly, so I could make adjustments if I had to. I had to get a little creative to get the bearings to the square Y axis rails, but the principle is the same and I was extremely happy with the results. You'll notice that through this build process, I had drawings to show how everything goes together, but I have a little confession to make. I didn't design the CNC machine. I mean, nobody else did either, though. My dirty secret is I don't like designing things. I find that when I try to design things, I get really frustrated from my lack of imagination and will often give up. The best way to ensure that I will actually complete a task is to just start building it. I only drew these drawings so I could show other people how I made the machine. Now that we got that out of the way, I did uncover one flaw in the logic of using belts to drive my CNC machine. The belts worked great for the X and Y axis, but that's because there was no static load on the motors, meaning that the only time there was any load on the motors is when the motors were turning themselves. They were designed to work this way, so it wasn't an issue. But the Z axis is supporting the weight of the router and the bearing plates. This meant that there was a static load on the Z-axis, and the stepper motor I was using for the Z-axis didn't have enough holding torque to overcome the weight of the axis itself. This meant that the whole setup would just fall to the bottom limit of travel every time the motor stopped turning. So, tail between my legs, I built a Z-axis drive from quarter inch all thread and changed the plane of the stepper motor. A stepper motor works using what's called steps. So effectively that means the motor knows where it is because it knows how many steps it's taken in a given direction. This particular one is 200 steps per revolution. 
So with the pulleys that I was using, it's one revolution per inch or 200 steps per inch. But when I went to the quarter 20 all thread, that means it's 4,000 steps per inch. So we have a lot higher resolution. And that's better for all sorts of complicated reasons. But it was really just a side this effect because- the door. That's the door? And, and I was chasing her and yay. So we switched to the quarter 20 all thread for a very specific reason, but the higher resolution is just a benefit of that particular setup. So we're just gonna take that as a win. My CNC computer is running Mach 3 on Windows XP. I went this route because I already knew how to operate it. There are plenty of free softwares out there, but I spent $150 because Mach 3 is wildly popular and I didn't know enough about CNC machines to know any better. I know lots of people are going to comment on how I should have used Linux and I'm stupid for spending the money. Now, I'm happy you guys like programming your antique little penguin computers, but I'm a mechanic. I'm not a software engineer. I honestly don't have time and energy to learn any of that. Mach 3 is everywhere, and I knew if I had a problem, I could figure it out quickly. That's why I went that route. Now, obviously you're going to need files of G-code to run on this machine. I use Fusion 360 to build my CAD files and generate my G-code. Fusion 360 is able to build CAD files and generate the code from the same software, so it is extremely convenient. Now, I honestly don't like Fusion 360. Again, I am not an engineer, but I feel like it's just not very intuitive software and can be downright torture to get your designs right sometimes. But it was free when I first started using it, and I don't like spending money, so here we are. With the G-code generated and dropped into Mach 3, and the CNC computer plugged into your CNC controller, we're ready to roll. Finally, I strapped my dad's old router to the Z axis and was ready to get cutting. Now, pretty early on, I was able to tell that something was going wrong, but then it became a lot more obvious pretty quickly. I'm not quite sure how well the video recorded that, but um, just in case you guys missed it, here's another front row seat. Never mind. Now it uh, won't turn on at all. It did not take long for the router my dad gave me to fail. The router had a couple of issues anyway. First, it was designed only to accept quarter inch shank router bits. Most milling bits are not quarter inch, so it was severely limiting the bits that I could use. I bought a collet reducer so I could use eighth inch bits, but only being able to use two different diameter bits was very frustrating. Another problem with this router, the speed is fixed. You can buy a router speed controller, but the setup has questionable reliability and a noticeable drop in torque when the speed is decreased. This, I believe, was the source of my router failure as I was using one of these speed controllers when my router failed. It was time to go a different route, and at this point, my CNC build broke the $500 threshold. I decided to get a three horsepower, air-cooled CNC spindle with a variable frequency drive, or in less words, a speed controller. I did manage to get a good deal on the setup, but I doubt you'll be as lucky as I was. I got the combo for $200, and it came with a whole pile of collets that all fit into the spindle. At this point, you guys are up to speed on my build. Overall, I'm very happy with the build, but I would be lying to you if I told you this is the last CNC machine I'm ever going to build. So at the end of the day, I was able to make a functional CNC router for about 500 bucks. I actually was a little bit under $500, but as soon as the router failed, I didn't want to just put another router on there, which is why I decided to go with the three horsepower spindle. Obviously it's a little bit more money, but I'm getting way more router out of the deal. Definitely a better setup for this particular machine. I know you guys are going to ask, the actual CNC electronics that came with the motors was about 200 bucks, but you really have to pick what works for you. So I can't really drop you a link because A, the seller isn't even on eBay anymore. Those guys from China are a little bit flaky. And B, because I'm not actually endorsed by anybody, so I'm not gonna recommend that you buy from any particular person. Figure that out for yourself. Now, if there's any more detail that you want for the CNC build, you're in luck because I actually did it in four separate parts. So you're actually able to look inside the description of this video. There's going to be all four videos. There's tons of information built into that series. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but definitely watch those. It's going to answer way more questions than I'm going to be able to do. If you're following my claw machine build at all, 
progress is going agonizingly slow because I'm actually working more than I was before thanks to this COVID-19 stuff. I know that seems like an unusual situation, but I'm trying to work on it as much as I can, but there's a lot of detail that goes into making something like this, and I wanna make sure that I do it right because I really only wanna do it once. Now, I would have done the CNC video sooner, but as it turns out, the CNC videos that I've already posted didn't really help my channel. As a matter of fact, I haven't really figured out what YouTube wants me to make. The stuff that ends up being really successful is never what I expect, and the things that I think are going to be successful really aren't what hits. So, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll figure it out, but right now I don't have it figured out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and thanks always for doing your part to help make this world a strange place.